Okay, good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little why or yes there. Just let me know that it's working. Hope everybody's having a fantastic morning. Hopefully your trading's been going well. Um, it was awesome to hear from some of you over the weekend about how your bankers close uh, trades went without me. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, I'm excited to do it again today with you guys. So let's just jump right into it and we'll talk more about that later. Um, as always, I need to remind you guys about the risks involved in this market. You can lose all or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. So please be aware of how many pips you're risking in addition to how big your lot size is and ultimately how that would affect your account if you were to lose money. All right, guys. So uh, a couple of things. Is I think we should just do bankers close trades first. So here's what I've got. I've actually taken a short earlier today. I don't... you. Uh, that's the direction I'm on on the Euro Frank. You can trade that with me, but it's not necessarily a banker's close trade. It's just a trade I took about an hour ago. You can see that over here, all these shorts. They're actually about to hit their targets. Um, um, as far as trade opportunities go, um, today's going to be a little bit unique because we've got a lot of really heavy hitters today. We've got a lot of markets that are very volatile and um, they're just kind of pushing. So you can get in the wrong direction pretty quick if you're not careful. So today, you know, even though this would be a banker's close opportunity to buy at the lower Bollinger Band, I don't think that's a good idea on the Euro franc. Um, today, yeah, you kind of have to pay attention to where supply and demand is almost before you look at the Bollinger Band. And so, you know, when we look for opportunities, I'm gonna show you a couple of places where I'm looking for trades. Um, as, as in terms of a banker's close setup. So I already sent you guys a, a short sell on the on the euro pound and it just, which obviously is the right direction. It just never got up to our entry and triggered. Um, but if you look where supply and demand is, so you've got this euro pound, for example, that is, um, I'm actually leaning towards taking a trade here, but it would be a short. You basically have a... Um, a reverse head and shoulder, or excuse me, a head and shoulders pattern going on. I guess you can count that as a shoulder. And it's pretty bearish. And there's really no demand in this area. Okay, where the market is sitting right now, there's really not a lot of demand. So the likelihood of this market continuing down, considering this price action up here, this bear price action, and the fact that you're not in a demand zone, is pretty high. So in terms, of, so basically, um, the, the the chance of this market continuing to the downside is basically what's going to happen. Um, and so you don't want to get caught as a retail trader buying something like this because if you buy something like this even though in hindsight on the lower time frame let me remove all these drawings remove drawings okay you know when a retail trader would look at this and say oh my gosh look at this this thing's so bearish it's probably going to come back up not necessarily right um not necessarily so you know, and it and also just busted right through this support level right here. That's not a good sign if you're a buyer, right? So you kind of have to look for those kinds of clues when you're trading. But I do like this. It's popped up just slightly. But again, <clears throat> this is a straightaway right here. There's really no demand until you get basically the next level of demand is all the way down in here okay so i am going to be looking for short sales today on the euro pound maybe the euro franc even i mean i'm already short on the euro franc i've made my in fact i've already i've got like on this trade yeah this euro franc trade i took an hour ago i'm up almost three thousand well i guess twenty six hundred dollars on this trade right and it's just absolute mayhem for these currency pairs so i am just looking for opportunities to continue to short okay let me jump over here to a one minute um actually let's do this do this yeah i'm gonna go ahead and just do this guys i'm gonna go ahead and short sell um the euro pound as a banker's close trade just because it has popped up a little bit um and it may pop up a little bit more which is fine i mean because uh i would much i'd feel much more confident and i'd feel really good about being on the short side of this. 
uh, long side, I'd be sweating bullets, guys. Definitely sweating bullets. Okay, so I just got I'm just got a start position built up on the euro pound, um, and again that is short. Um, and then, like I said, I've got some trades over here um, that I took on my own about an hour ago, um, shorting the euro franc, and that one looks to be the most bearish, but it's already kind of played itself out. Um, actually, let's do take a look at that one on a kind of a bigger time frame. So here's the euro franc. This is a one minute chart. It's so bearish. Price action is just lower high, lower low after lower high, lower low. It just keeps, it just nonstop, absolutely crushing. And even this, this actually just hit this support right here. Looks like it barely pierced through it. It might, who knows, maybe it'll find a way back up there, but I don't think so because this was all demand right here. And it, utterly disrespected that demand level just totally disrespected this just sliced right through it okay again if for example let's say i had bought here because i thought that that demand was going to hold and it didn't you know you don't this is the type of trade you don't want to re-enter and try to go long again um this should be a sign that hey this market wants to continue down i mean also there's a lot of other things you look at this euro pound this is on the 15 minute chart um, a lot of different things here, and this has been in the making for about two weeks now. You know, you had this high over here, some highs over here, um, high, and then you had a high, and each high is lower than the previous high, and then subsequently we're breaking structure levels like right there. We broke this structure level right here. Um, just continue to break below that. And it looks like we're about ready to just break this one too, right? So it's it's pretty bearish, guys. And so the next real demand area, in my opinion, would be kind of, we'll say this right here. That's demand, okay? And I guess we are getting pretty close to it, but... I would imagine this market, if it disrespected this demand, like this one up here in the way that it did, I don't have a lot of confidence in this one down here. Okay. And it'll probably go quite, it'll probably go through this one pretty hard. Um, let's see, is there, is there any other clues we can get? Let's go into a higher time frame. Any other clues we can sneak out of here? I mean, there's also demand down here. I don't know if it'll go that far, but who knows? I mean, the thing is, it's hard to say that this demand would hold up in the nearby area because of how bearish this price action has been up here and the number of structure levels that just keep getting decimated one after another. So, I mean... I don't think it's a good idea to trade every single supply or demand that you see. I think it's important to find the specific ones that make the most sense. Okay. So, okay. Anyway, so there's that one. Let's go back and look at, oops, let's just delete all of that stuff. Let's go to the Euro pound again. Okay. So this one I like probably a little bit more because I think it's earlier on. And it's bearish traje trajectory. Okay. Oh, the other thing too, guys, that helps me figure out which trades to take is go look at client sentiment, right? Go look at either daily effects with IG, Awanda. You know, there's a lot of different places where there's sentiment indexes that you can look at. The reason why I like this one is um, Technically, I'm not supposed to use this. They don't want U.S. citizens using this. I don't know why. I think it's because they offer brokerages that are not U.S. regulated. But nonetheless, their tools are really nice. So I just say I'm not a U.S. citizen. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what's cool here is you can see what's going on, right? So look at the euro pound, for example. Of retail traders in the last 24 hours, they've added 28% to their long position and minus 4% to the short position. And and I like this number. The, this matters to me more 
these numbers matter to me more than these numbers over here. Okay, I don't care as much that they're short overall or long overall. I don't care about that. What I care about is what they're doing today, right? What I care about is, okay, hey, today they've increased their long positions substantially and they've decreased their short positions. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that the retail trader is shifting, okay? And if you can catch the shift, the more likely that you'll you'll be in the right direction. So since they're going long, we want to go short, right? And you look at other currency pairs like um, this Euro franc, same thing. They are adding long positions and decreasing their short holdings. What does that tell us about the Euro franc? It's probably going to continue lower um, in addition to the fact, and that's just on the daily Right. And that's why I care about this for a daily trade. You know, what am I going to trade today? Oh, this. I'm going to go short the Euro franc. And sure enough, like I've got a trade that I took just over an hour ago. It's up $2,600. Um, but it's not just because I did this. I looked at this to find my direction. And then what I do, and find which pair I really want to trade today. And then what I do is I come over here. And I'm looking for, if, for example, if I go back to the Euro franc just for a second, um, I'm looking for specific supplier demand zones that make sense. So I sold today on this Euro franc. Um, I sold like right here. Um, and why did I sell there? Why did I sell there? It's because um, it was basically pulling up into this supply area, okay? This little thing right here. That supply area, it was pulling up into that. Meanwhile, most retail traders are buying this and it's pulling up into supply. That's a perfect execution, right? So if it's pulling up into supply, and most traders are are buying, and that's that's going to be a picture perfect trade. And so far, so good on that one. But um, and then you pull up, like I said, the euro pound. You go over here. Um, a lot of things going on over here. So on the most immediate thing right here, you can see on the one minute chart. So I'm pretty excited about this one you've got this head and shoulders pattern that subsequently led to the most recent pull down today, okay? This was a structure zone right here, which we also call support or resistance, right? That got wasted. And then most recently, and this happened in the last 30 minutes or so, maybe an hour, this is another structures point, right? That's support, support, and the market just broke it right and so you look at all that and you're like hmm that's definitely something to be aware of and then you go to the next time frame up you know maybe a five minute chart you come out here so there's the there's the reverse head and shoulders or not reverse but that is the head and shoulders on the one minute and then you come over here on a little bit of a higher time frame, and it's doing the same thing. It's fractaling essentially. It's just a, I don't know if fractaling is a, a word, but uh, markets are fractal in nature, right? And so it's doing basically the same thing. You know, you got a head and shoulders pattern led to this market pulling down. This was a structure point. Basically, this whole thing was structure. Market broke that. And we're in a straightaway, right? You kind of look over here, there's no demand in this right? Every time, like take a close up here from this break of structure to this demand down here. Is there any demand in between here and here or here and here, right? There's no, there's really no demand. These are just straightaways, right? Straight away, market came down straight away, back up straight away down. And then this comes back up right here, but the market doesn't like to hang out in this circle right here. And where are we right now? You come fast forward, we're in that right now. So the likelihood of the market um, 
uh, moving quickly out of this zone is is also uh, again extremely likely. Um, could it go up? Sure, but um, I, I think if anything, you're going to see this market pull back. And so now, what you want to do, our job, since we know that you know you come over here, you know that retail traders have added just in the last 24 hours 28 percent to the long side. In fact, out of all the majors, yeah, out of all the major currencies. Um, the euro pound has experienced the most drastic um, increase in retail sentiment to the long side than any other currency pair on this planet, right? And that's that's telling you something, right? And then they've decreased their short positions, which is perfect. So since they're decreasing short positions and increasing long positions, you know, we need to be looking for shorts when they're buying. Right. So when we come and then in addition to that, you just have all this price action that indicates um, the market's pushing lower and and especially most recently. And this is why I like this trade the most for the, this hour, um, the short position on the euro pound it is the fact that in the last hour, maybe 30 minutes, we broke this structure point. So right here, we bro we broke that. So we definitely know that um, the bias is to the downside and this could make for a really phenomenal trade. So now what we got to do is break it down to a smaller time frame. now that we've done all that analysis and find supplier demand zones. It's actually, this is actually a really great place to sell. We already have sales on, so perfect. Um, but I think this is a great place to sell. Let's kind of break that down. On the one minute chart, we know this is a break of structure, even on a higher time frame right there. So where is the supply on the one minute? So the smaller time frame, this is what helps you get the most uh, pristine entry. Well, technically, um, whatever the market did in this little area right here is what caused it to break that zone. And so anytime you're going to see the market come up into this purple area, you should see it just reject. And so far that's happened. It's come up here and gotten, it got rejected, came up, got rejected. And um, if it does it again, it'll get rejected. But at this point, you can't really afford to not be in this trade, right? Because this thing could start to just fall off a cliff, right? And when I say fall off a cliff, on the euro pound, the opportunity is only 13 pips, right? Um, but that's fine. But this is definitely... Um, You'd be sweating bullets if you were a buyer right now. You'd be in big, big trouble if you were a buyer. So definitely want to be a seller right here. And um, you might find, I don't think, the reason why this hasn't just fallen apart yet is because, yeah, there are some buyers trying to lift this up. They view it as a support level. You know, they think this is a oversold area. Um which, by the way, be very careful with indicators and people who tell you, oh, the market's oversold or overbought. Um, that happens all the time. Um, I see people, um, for example, let me just draw, draw an example for you. Let me go ahead and load up another workspace here. What's well, a good day, Dick, guys. It's going to be a very good day. Um, it has been a good day and it's going to continue, I believe. I think we're in the right trade, definitely in the right trade. Um, so what a lot of people do, um, in fact, I can even use this chart as an example. This is just the Aussie dollar that just, no reason, it just popped up. It's just the first thing that was on my chart. What a lot of people do is, you know, they see this market coming up and they'll say, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's overbought right? It's too high. Well, you know, it's too high right here, but then the market just continues higher, right? And they say, oh, now it's overbought. Uh, but it, but I thought you said it was overbought over here and now it's overbought here. And then it goes up again and then they'll say, ah, oh, it's really overbought. And it's like, but you said that the last three times or four times, right? So what I'm saying is a lot of, um, this actually happened a lot to me. I think I told you guys, I, I used to do, uh, like I was in real estate and mortgages and stuff. 
um, a lot of new buyers would say things like, you know, I'm going to wait for the market to pull back or something like that, or I'm going to wait for a slowdown. Um, and then all this time, you know, I had a, people, people would say this back in like, uh, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019, they'd say it's, uh, you know, it's, it's overbought. Uh, well, that's a big mistake because prices today are way, way higher in some areas, double what they were just back in 2018 or 2017. And, um, those are the same people who are saying it's overbought today, right? And I'm not saying it is or not. I'm not saying that it is today or it is. I have no idea. But usually people who say things like that in the market are the ones who get burned because they stay out of the market, right? So for example, when we're trading this euro pound, we use that same concept. Um, somebody who doesn't understand these types of principles would come here and look at this chart on a one minute time frame, and say, oh, dang, that's oversold. That thing's just going to go up. We're just going to see a huge move up to the upside because it's so oversold or something like that. Um, and they're dead wrong. They're, they're dead wrong. They're absolutely wrong. And, and to their surprise, what you'll probably see, and this is my prediction, is either, you know, maybe this thing comes up just a little, maybe it comes up and tests you know, a little demand or, or a supply up here, and then it's just going to get decimated, right? You know, that's kind of how I would view this today. Or it's just going to go right in our favor, right? But um, anyway, I'm just trying to explain some of those concepts cause, because when I was brand new to trading, when I was brand, brand new, that's kind of how I traded the charts, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible to me how blind I was to the charts when I first started, but you know, everyone's new, right? Yeah. At some point you got to be new at some point. Um, but yeah, I would look at the charts and say, oh my gosh, um, you, you know, look at this huge move down, you know, what goes down must go up or what goes up must come down type of thing. And I would just buy way too early, you know, um, you know, again, like I said, I don't think that this euro pound is finished uh, moving down today. Um, so yeah, you can get burned pretty quick on stuff like that. I mean, look at the euro franc. I mean, what's, well, or even this one, I guess, right? What did we say? If you look at the sentiment index, you know, the retail traders have increased their positions by 28% to the long side. Okay. How do you think they're doing this morning, <laughs> right? How are they doing this morning? And they're increasing their long positions. How do you think they're doing? Which, by the way, here's, I'm going to draw a straw short. I like doing this. So basically, I'm just going to draw a short position there. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Something like this. That's the trade opportunity right there. I mean, it may go up. I'll still work it if it goes up because I feel that confident. But that's essentially the trade opportunity. All right. But yeah, again, if they're increasing their long positions, how do you think they're doing? No, they're all in a drawdown. They're all losing money. And, you know, if this thing takes another... Let me ask you this. Where do you think most retail traders put their stop losses on their long position? Probably just below this. That's probably where a lot of people's stop losses are um, if they're buying. So don't you think the banks would love to go hit all of those? Yeah, of course they'd love to hit all those, right? That would that would just flood the market with more liquidity. So anyway, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um and then you look at like the Euro franc, it's the same concept. You go to the sentiment index. Uh, they've added 14% to the long side, decreased to 15% on the on the short side. So that's another really great trade to take today. Um, and again, when you're looking at this sentiment index, pay I would pay more attention, especially if you're doing some intraday or day trades. Definitely focus on the shift or the change in. Okay, this to me matters so much more than the net long or the net short. It's the change that matters because this is real time, real time changes. Um, 
so yeah, yeah if they're adding long positions and taking away their short positions. Where do you think the market's going? Definitely to the downside, right? Definitely down. So, uh, and yeah, they're getting they're getting act, act, actually decimated on this trade too. So, you know, I would be if I if I were you, I'd be looking for more supplier demand zones to be selling at today. But this thing, I mean, I don't believe for one moment this thing's going to come all the way back up to here. I don't I don't know if it'd ever do that or if it could do that today after so much after so much retail buying i think it would just keep going keep going down so anyway um but this one i don't like as much uh, cuz it's already gone down so much um but and that's not necessarily a problem but my problem or qualm with continuing to sell the euro franc is when you come to the higher time frame um i guess it is coming in close to some to some demand granted it did just bust through this demand level um so it may just continue lower but if anything it might run into i think the move's mostly over that's all i'm trying to say so that that one i mean i probably should take my profits on my euro franc trade in fact i think i'm going to do that um this is just a trade. Again, a lot of you guys didn't take this trade, and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and close my own trades here. But the euro pound, definitely, I'm going to stay in. Definitely. Got a lot of limit orders. I was trying to sell if it went up a little bit more, trying to get some better prices, but obviously it just went per down perfectly. So I'm going to close these two. And then I'll just be left with my Euro pound shorts right here. And this trade is going to go. Let's see, how far did I say? There's technically, to me, the way I'm viewing this, this is kind of the demand right here that is worth holding on to. Or, or excuse me, I think the market will definitely go to that area, which is minimum this trade. I guess it has, I guess I could say it has about minimum 15 to 20 pips to go. It could go further for sure. But um, I wouldn't take profits, guys, unless you've made at least 15 pips on each trade. So th this is really good. There's still plenty of runway. I, I guess I don't know. How, how do you say it? Like there's still runway left on this trade today to be made to the short side. It's not done going down. So I'm just going to kind of scatter some of these targets. Yeah, this looks good to me. This area right here looks perfect. So that's what I'm hoping, and that's what I'm hanging on to this morning. And then let me recap while we're just waiting on this, because it's going to be a little bit slow, but um, let me recap our trade. We took a trade, uh, also Euro franc short. Kind of wish I stayed in it, but um, this is a trade we took on on um, trade that we took Friday morning. So I took this one with you guys. Um, I obviously didn't host the Bankers Close class because I was in Florida, but I did take this trade in the morning on Friday. 
Um, basically the same concept, right? So how did I start off my day? So I was looking at the market. I got up kind of early because I was on Eastern time zone. And so, you know, I was up a little earlier than I normally would trade on a, on a Friday because I live in mountain time zone. So it's a little bit later, I, I guess. So, which is fine, but I got up a little bit earlier and then I checked out the sentiment index. You know, I went here and looked at this one. I looked at Awandas and just kind of compared and contrasted each one. And what I found was basically a duplicate of what today had. So Euro, the Euro franc was basically doing the same thing. It had an increase in long positions and a decrease in short positions in the last 24 hours by retail traders. So since I had that information and I could see that, then for me, I was thinking, okay, I'm looking for shorts today. If I'm going to trade the Euro franc, I'm going to be looking for shorts. So that's perfect. So I came over here and then... Um, this was the trade, by the way. Let me pull up the telegram for you guys to see. Um, this was the trade that I sent out originally. Um, so yeah, here at Yule Frank on a five-minute chart. And basically, the market had come down and that came back up, formed kind of a supply area. Um, so I felt pretty comfortable thinking, you know, if the market were to come back up into this little supply area in the midst of such buying pressure by the retail traders, so trader, what do we call it? Trader John's trader averages, trader average was buying this on Friday. So I knew or I had a pretty good idea that if it came up into some supply, um, then there would be a continuation to the downside. Right. So this was the opportunity. And then this was it right here. Um, this was the trade. So this is what this is the supply we were talking about. So we put in a short position to sell basically when it came up into the supply right here. And then you just put a stop loss at the end of supply and then you just ride this all the way down to the next demand. Um, and I can't remember if we got out here or where exactly we got out, but um, that's that's the trade in a nutshell right there. It's just it's just a quick little scalp, you know, makes three to one or four to one type of um, trade opportunity. Um, you know that the retail traders are buying this. So if this were to come up and hit any somewhat significant level of supply, you should see the market come down. So this is how you get sniper like opportunities to to trade every day right sniper like opportunities to buy and sell so today um what i did is i did the same thing on the euro franc and i tried to do it with you guys at the euro pound but the euro pound just went down too fast um but today what i did is the exact same thing so this thing was just coming down coming down coming down and um I saw this little supply area right here and I just essentially placed a sh short, a, a sell order right there, stop loss above the supply. And then I just rolled this down, right? And that's how you get really good risk management type trades, you know, reward to risk ratios that are awesome. So kind of the routine is, Make sure, you know, where the, which, which trades have the biggest change in retail sentiment daily. Go look at those pairs, identify on a one or five minute chart where those supplier demand levels are, and then just follow proper risk management. Put in a three to one, four to one type of opportunity. Um, yeah, that's perfect. I also this morning did place another trade on here that never triggered. I actually did place a, a a short right here with a tight stop loss here because I felt like this area was a good supply and that one never triggered, but it, nonetheless, it was there. I just felt like this little, it looks better on a one minute chart, 
you can see it. Here we go. Let's go over here. There it is. I just felt like whatever happened here kind of caused this breakout. So I felt like this was a good area. And I think it was. The problem is the market just never could get up to it. It got pretty close right here for the sell. And then it pulled back. It just never got there. So you kind of have to play with the entry a little bit, I feel like. Um, and look for those trade opportunities. And then let's see. Other opportunities today. I guess there's some areas up here you could consider. But and then as far as the euro pound goes, this is a trade I took with you guys. Obviously, we're in it now, but I've been trying to find an even better entry for us. So the trade I took with you guys earlier, and this was about an hour, maybe two hours ago now. I placed a short position, which I still have open. I just haven't closed it yet. Basically, this is a really solid area right here. So this is a nice supply area on a one minute chart. Okay, it broke that area. Well, I guess it didn't break a lot of structures. Um, it just broke its own little structure that it created it was right here. So I was thinking, okay, since we know that most retail traders are buying this, um, this would be a great area to sell at. So, and it did get close, you know, it got probably within a pip away right there, got really close to to executing the sell. But again, you're looking for sniper like entries like that. Um, and not all of them are going to trigger like this one didn't quite trigger, but nonetheless, the concept is there. And I want you guys to learn how to find those concepts. Um, this one, again, kind of like the Euro Frank just fell apart so quickly that when you get a chance for the market to go up so that you can sell at a better price, that opportunity is just so quick. It is so quick and so gone. Because everyone else has their eyes on sell any well, the big money has their eyes on selling it, right? And so anytime it pops up, they're like, oh, I want that price. Oh, I want that price. So sometimes it doesn't even quite reach the supply because somebody's willing to take that trade before even we can get to it. You know, we we're looking for the more traditional, okay, this is the supply zone. I would rather take the trade there, but just a pip shy, somebody else hopped on it before we could. So that's how competitive the market is sometimes. It's very competitive. Um, and so they're the ones that ended up winning and we didn't make money or lose money really. We're, I guess we're making money now. It's starting to go down again, but the real money was made on that little move right there. About an hour, about an hour and a half ago, right there would have been awesome. So... Um, and maybe and maybe that's something I do is I kind of cheat this up a little bit, but I hate to do that because th there's plenty of trades that will trigger just perfectly. So, um, and now what are we doing now? So since we know, so that's still a good area to sell if the market ever got back to it today. I doubt it at this point because we're at the latter end of the day. So where's the supply right now? Well, the supply is basically this. This is the supply area. Okay. Um, that's this, this is where supply is. So anytime the market kind of comes up to, into that, that's where the market's just going to get pounced on and just got, and get sent lower. And ultimately we're waiting for a move. That's about 15 or 20 pips. We'll say 15 pips. We're looking for something down here. Um, and the sniper like entry is going to be like right here or right here, ideally, and again, this is the type of thing where you can place that short position, plug in your stop loss, and then just ride like that. And there's your four to one re reward to risk ratio trade, right? And it all starts with knowing where retail or dumb money's trading today. So you know where dumb money's going. You know that this pair, I think especially this pair, I think either the euro franc or euro pound are great contenders, but we know that retail traders are buying this, right? And so basically our job is just to find those pristine entries after we know which way we're going to go. And then we just go from there. But sometime this afternoon or sometime this morning, this will, should break, this support area should break. And when it breaks, it's gone.
it's gone. Um, or what you might see is it may come down, it may come down, come back up, and then you're just looking for another entry you could sell again when it hits some supply because this technically, supply would technically, this is the current supply we're working with is this area. But in the future, if this does break down, I would consider maybe this to be the new supply and you can kind of condense that maybe this whole thing right here and then you could do another re-entry when it pops back up right so you're constantly working that trade working new opportunities within this pair but no longs today i don't care how enticing it might look we don't take any longs with this pair today um, not when dumb money is um buying like they are right now i know how dumb money is they're thinking oh we're at support right now uh you know we're at support this is going to be a great area to buy great area to buy right and it's going to go up here my wildest dreams could come true eh, wrong it's not going to happen guys <laughs> right it's it's the floor is going to come out and it's just going to keep coming down so i mean sure maybe the retail trader catches a little bit of a break and it comes up a little bit, punches back into this supply zone. But again, ultimate, its ultimate fate is to continue down, uh, is to continue lower. And you can look for other trade setups too while we're waiting on that one. You can see, okay, well, what else is moving or what else looks like a good one? Um, you can see other pairs like, um, let's see, you know, something like the USD CAD, I wouldn't really want to touch because if you look at it, it, it has increased its positions to both sides, right? 3% to long and 13% short. Could you trade that? Sure. I mean, because most people are going short than long. So maybe you go long instead, but I don't like it when they're both going the same way. They're increasing their positions both ways. What I like is a decrease in one side and an increase in another side. And I usually like them to be as proportional as possible if I can. So today, the Euro franc is probably perfect because, you know, it's proportional, it's pretty proportional, you know, 14% on the long side and a decrease by 15% on the short side. That's perfect. Uh, what else looks good um, or doesn't look good? Um, yeah, for example, the Aussie yen, there's a decrease in long positions by 2% and an increase in shorts by one. That's really not a big deal. That's not a huge change. Um, Pound yen is a little bit of a different story. It's a smaller decrease in long positions, but a massive increase in shorts. So that one may be worth considering. But again, I'd like to see them closer together if I can. Um, Aussie dollar is a similar type of thing going on. Yesterday, I actually took a short on the Aussie dollar uh, last night during the Asian session. Um, Book some pips on that. But it was it was um, just a trade I took last night when I was coming home from Florida. I, I saw that these were pretty these numbers were pretty close together. One was negative and the other one was positive. I took a short position. So that what that means is there was an increase in longs and a decrease in shorts. Because yeah, because they took a short. So um, and this was good. I took this trade. Um, on the Aussie dollar, it was, well, let's see, it was back here. Um, oh yeah. Some, somewhere over here, I took a short and, uh, and uh, yeah, ultimately worked out. Um, it looks like it's back up this morning, but yeah, it was good. And it was all because during the Tokyo session, um, I, I came over here and it was the most imbalanced, uh, currency pair out of everything that we're looking at, right? The Aussie dollar. And it was also in session. So I saw that most people were buying and, um, in terms of retail traders and they were also selling at the same time. So, or excuse me, they, 
they were not selling, they were buying and they were decreasing their selling, which for me is a signal that I need to do the opposite. And so all I did is I just looked for supplier demand areas to, to take that short. which I think I used a combination of like this right here, because whatever happened here and here are basically whatever created this break of structure down here. So this is a structure point market broke that. So whatever they did here was kind of what caused that. And then same thing up here, these highs are what kind of sent the market lower. And so that was a great place to sell. And sure enough, that's a good supply area. Anyway, so that was the trade I took yesterday. I'm just showing you just for fun, just to show you the concept. So you can trade this in the Tokyo or Asian, or, or um, you can trade this during the New York and London overlap. Definitely. Let's see, what are some other options for us today? Usually I just categorize them by long, changing long and changing short. And I'll tell you what exactly what you're trading. So yeah, Euro Frank's perfect. Euro pound can work because it's such an increase in long positions and a decrease in shorts. But yeah, I would like these numbers to be closer together, but it's fine. And then, yeah, everything else just really isn't touched too much. And like the euro yen is mixed because you know it's an increase in longs and also an increase in shorts. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. All right, guys. So right now we're just bouncing off of um we're bouncing off of this support. And we're bouncing off of and getting rejected from this supply, right? That's the current narrative on the euro pound. And that's just kind of what happens at this hour because, you know, New York, uh, not New York, London closes in about 10 minutes. And so, yeah, the market's going to be slower today. So this is probably another good area to add. Oops, there, see, there it is. It just immediately got rejected. I was going to say, that's a good area to sell. And then boom, it just got rejected, <laughs> right? Um, let me show you some other good areas to sell too, in case this market does um, go up, because I do think this is a great trade to take today. Um, technically, whatever happened like right here is what caused this break of structure, right? And that's really the those good, good areas. So I would say right there is another really, really good selling area. And then the same area I texted out on Telegram about 30 minutes ago. So this is, or an hour ago, I guess. This would be another really good selling area too. Up here, maybe specifically that right there. But yeah, let the, let the little retail traders have their little buy right here get them excited um if maybe who i don't know it's already pulling back again but again ultimately the the sell is the the right idea with this trade let me hop over there I'll add another sell or so. And then let's see. This is still my favorite supply. It's right here. I just don't know if it'll get up to it. That would be just picture perfect sell opportunity right there. If you could get to that. If you could touch this, sell. And yeah, there's some smaller opportunities along the way. Definitely, uh, this has a little bit, little bit of a potential right there. Um, this does too. It looks like we just hit this. And yeah, I should have had some sell limits ready to go right there, but I didn't. That's fine.
I guess I can place them anyway. Let me go ahead and place a few celimits up here just in case it comes back up. And then, yeah, some up here would be good too. But this area I'm really excited about. So I'm definitely going to layer up big time up there if it got to that. I don't think it will, but you might as well have them ready. So I'll try to send more. I'm trying to find more of these types of trades to send to you. They're the as you guys know, and as you've seen in these examples I've shown today, they they're so not limited, but they happen so quickly, right? And that's just the cost of competition. You know, I was thinking about this. Um, have you you guys have heard the term, right? If if it were easy, everybody else would be doing it, right? Well, and, and that's the thing. It's not easy. Is it worth it? Yes, it's totally worth it. It's just not that easy. So if, again, I'm telling you like with this trade I took today with this Euro franc, um, yeah, I sold right on this, this guy right here. I sold on that. But look how slim that opportunity existed. How long was that there? That was only there for three or four minutes to get that precise, precise opportunity, right? So since that opportunity was so slim, does that mean we should give up and not trade? No, definitely. We just need to learn how to find those and then not just find them, but then know what to do when we find them, right? And be there in the moment that they happen. So, you know, for me, I know that volatility is pretty strong in the mornings between, for me, between about like 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., volatility is really, really strong. Um, that's like between, if you're on the East Coast, that would be um, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Volatility is just perfect because you're right in the middle of that New York-London overlap. And so if there's going to be follow-through moves, if you're going to find liquidity, supply and demand, all of that's going to be available in those two hours. So, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys live probably in my proximity here. I know some of you are in New York. Some of you are in, I got, I, some of you are in California, but um, you know, if you live in mountain time zone, like I am, you're going to want to get up at 6 a.m., maybe 7 a.m. and look for these types of opportunities. If you like to trade liquidity, right? Um, so for me, I came in here and said, okay, great. I can see that retail traders are buying this. I want to be a seller. Okay, where are my sell zones? Um, you know, I'm looking at this and saying, okay, well, this whole thing is is supply. Great. If the market ever returns to the supply and touches it, then we know that that's going to be a good selling area. And yeah, there were a couple of opportunities technically right there, just barely right there, right there. And then obviously right here was the last little area before this thing just fell off, right? But the opportunity doesn't exist. I mean, that that came and went very quickly, right? Opportunity came and went. And then same thing with the Euro pound. This morning, we know we want to be sellers. Where are those opportunities to sell at? But we have some right now that we're working on, right? We sold down here. We're going to sell up here again. And then, yeah, if it wants to come up here, great. We'll sell there. We'll especially want to sell here. I think what a lot of retail traders run into in terms of finding profitability is they're willing to buy and sell just anywhere, right? They're willing to buy and sell at just any price. And unfortunately, if you're just buying or selling at just any price, then what happens is you're not going to get the reward to risk ratio you need to be profitable because you're just selling at, and you're, you're, you know, what I'm trying to say is if you're, if you come over to retail sentiment and you see, oh, hey, most people are buying, so I'm going to sell today, boom, just throwing a sell. 
I don't think that's going to make you profitable. Maybe, I mean, depend, maybe if you do a couple of things, kind of change the way you do some, some things, you might be profitable doing that. But in my experience, if you're going to trade sentiment, right, this should just tell you which direction you're looking for trades. That's it. Okay. But that doesn't just mean, okay, most people are buying, most people are selling. Okay. I'll respond accordingly right now and just take the trade. That shouldn't be the end of your analysis. You should come in here, find out where the bias is, where you're going to get the most help from the big banks and where the retail traders are going to be buying and selling to. And then what you do is you look for those zones when you come onto the charts. Okay. So we know where those zones are, and then we're just looking to execute trades inside those zones. That's that's what I would do if I were trading. That's Yeah, that's what I would do if I were you, just kind of looking for those kinds of things. Because again, like I said, most retail traders will just buy and sell wherever. Like, oh, I have a buy button, I'll just buy. Oh, I have a sell button, I'll just sell. And I don't think that's good enough um, because I've been there. I've done that. Um, and here's what happens to just real side, side, side note. If you take a trade, let's do, let me give you an example. Let's just say remove drawings. Let's say we know we're supposed to be selling today. So you just sell right here and, you know, you put a stop loss up here, maybe a target down here you know, one-to-one -one type of reward to risk ratio. Can that work? Yeah, I think it can. Uh, yeah, it definitely has the potential to make you some money. Um, it's a very simplified version of trading when you're just trading solely off of the sentiment and then using a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio type of thing. Yeah, it's possible to make money doing that. Um, it's a very quick way to do it. But here's the problem with something like this. If your stop loss is so wide, if you have such a wide stop loss, um, what ends up happening is your lot size your lot size goes down, right? So if I'm taking a trade, for example, like this one that I sent out earlier, which is still valid, you know, if the market comes to here and I have a stop loss right here because that's a good place to put it, and I pull my target down, you know, something like this, all of a sudden I have a five to one reward to risk ratio trade. So now I can increase my lot size. And what naturally happens is if you're successfully taking trades like this, instead of the one I just showed you, what happens is when you win, it's like winning the lottery, right? Like you just won, you know, five, $10,000, $15,000 on a single trade and you only risked one, two, three thousand dollars to take that exact same setup, right? The downside that a lot of people run into, and I've definitely felt this as well, is when you take these types of trades, what inevitably happens is you have more losers. So you will take more losers because you have such a tighter stop loss and a bigger take profit. So you are going to have more losses, but those losses are going to be much, much smaller than your profits. But it's so hard to deal with as a, I feel like as a human, because we want to win. We have this innate desire to be to to be right and and to win. And we don't feel like we're winning when we're taking multiple losses in a row. Even if it even if overall we're making money, it it doesn't feel like we're 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 winners, right? I, I've seen this too with a lot of other strategies that I've traded in the past. Sometimes I get more satisfaction, just my innate desires and my innate um, appetites, I guess, are, are more satisfied when I'm just taking win after win or after win. I'm just, okay, I, I made a three pip profit here and I took five trades and I hit three pips on each one. That is way more satisfying than losing four three times in a row. And then on the fifth trade, you have a seven to one that just won, right? And it covered all your losses and gave you a truckload of cash just right there in your bank account. Um, so anyway, it's just something to be aware of if you're going to go down this route of, hey, I'm going to 
only take good reward to risk ratio trades, which is the way to do it, but it is what you're going to run into psychologically. So just make sure that you're aware of that. All right, guys. So here's what we're going to do. So I got a good, we've got some good trades here. I'm actually going to add one more to my, just add another sell there. And then the next really good areas are up here. So I'm going to go ahead and sell up there if we, if we can get to those. I don't even know if we can, but I'm still banking on breaking this support sometime this morning. Maybe we'll see if we can get to it. If not, you know, I'll probably close some of these out later. Maybe if we get back down to this support area, but we don't break it, I'll take my profits on these or most of my profits and we'll just go from there. But yeah, you guys will get an update from me on Telegram. So just keep an eye out on the Telegram and uh, um, and then I'll let you know what we're doing with this trade. So, all right, guys. So I appreciate your attendance today. Thanks for coming. I'll see if I can get some more trades out this evening for the Tokyo Sydney session. If you guys are interested in trading that. Um, other than that, you'll just get an update from me and we'll see you guys tomorrow on the next Bankers Close webinar. Thanks for coming.